Not just one, but two of the most popular search engines in the world are owned by none other than Google. Most e-commerce marketers understand the basics, but are missing out on massive growth opportunities with Google Ads. So today I'm sharing three secrets to e-commerce growth with Google. Welcome back, I'm Nate Cook Nelson with Common Thread Collective, here to help you master e-commerce growth, starting with Google secret number one. Don't use return on ad spend as your compass. Return on ad spend or ROAS has its time and place, but some of the most common mistakes we see are when brands or marketers are using ROAS as their single source of truth. The massive problem with this strategy is prospecting versus remarketing. Since your remarketing audiences are already familiar with your brand, your return on ad spend is probably gonna be higher. But since your prospecting audiences haven't even heard of you before, it will cost more to acquire new customers. As you begin to overinvest in that remarketing audience or squeeze the sponge of revenue, you're not actually prospecting and bringing new customers into that audience. And your sales are dropping even though you have a high ROAS. We're not saying you shouldn't be using return on ad spend to inform the success of your campaigns. But when it becomes your only source of truth and isn't connected to some sort of off-platform metric, you begin to go down that dangerous path of the shrinking sponge. To be sure you're keeping the perfect balance between prospecting and remarketing on Google, it's important to use secret number two and allocate your spend for growth. Although Google is known as the most popular search engine in the world, we have to remember Google is more than search. There are a multitude of other placements beyond search available to us in Google Ads, from YouTube to display to shopping ads. A great place to start when thinking about allocating your spend for growth is what we call the search engine marketing order of operations. Since a picture is worth a thousand words, here's a visual that shows our recommended allocation of spend for each channel. We have branded search at less than 10% of spend to pick up that low hanging fruit but not overspend. We have Google Shopping at more than 60% of spend. We have non-branded search making up about 18% of spend. YouTube making up about 8% of spend focused on remarketing but could tap into prospecting as well. And Smart Display and Discovery focused on about 4% of spend. This one's all about being omnipresent on multiple retargeting touch points. You see the importance of starting to allocate to non-branded search, YouTube, smart display and discovery, but why is Google Shopping such a big part of the funnel? Before I answer that, a bonus tip on future-proofing your business is tapping into the power of recurring revenue. With Yappo, the sponsor of today's video, creating your own subscriptions is only a few clicks away. Yappo Subscriptions connects with your Shopify checkout to keep conversions high, provides a straightforward merchant experience, and gives your customers flexibility so they not only start, but stay subscribed. Launch subscriptions on your Shopify store in just eight minutes by searching Yacht Post subscriptions on the Shopify app store or by clicking the first link in the description below. Now why is so much spend allocated to Google Shopping ads? First, it's less expensive. Shopping campaigns in almost all cases have lower cost per click than traditional search campaigns. The second reason so much spend is allocated to Google Shopping ads is specificity. Shopping ads are great at appearing for long tail, high intent keywords. Men's camo shorts, for example, is extremely specific. Conversions skyrocket when you have exactly what your potential customer is looking for. There are two primary types of shopping campaigns, smart shopping and standard shopping. Our Google team generally starts with the standard shopping campaign because here you can get the search terms report. This gives us visibility into the actual search queries users are typing. They use the data from that report to optimize standard shopping ads and then once that is dialed in, they will run a smart shopping campaign and directly compare performance. As you begin to scale spend on Google Shopping ads, there are two important things to keep in mind. One, as you reach a larger audience, the percentage of people who are interested in what you're offering will get smaller. We won't dive into advertising efficiency in this video, but a great tool that's accessible in your Google ad account is the performance planner for shopping campaigns. Its aim is to illustrate this exact concept. How does the relationship between ad spend and profitability play out over different spend levels? The second thing is ensuring that you have clean, accurate, up-to-date product feeds. For instructions on setting up your Google Shopping ads and recommended data feed tools, check out the link in the description to our Google Shopping ads article. And if you're wondering what metrics you should be using in addition to return on ad spend, then check out the video here by Taylor Holiday, our CEO, on the true success metrics for e-commerce growth. And until next time, keep growing your business and we'll be here to help you make it happen.